Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am here today, hopefully to give you a high level overview of what a Elixir codebase looks like. And I'm gonna do this overview from a React developer perspective. So I'm gonna give a bunch of examples uh, to React and hopefully this is useful to you. So let's start. Here I have a clone of my side project called techschool.dev. If you don't know what that is, just type on your browser techschool.dev and you're gonna find out. So on a Elixir code base, you can see here, my face is in the front. Okay, but now I'm inverted. Anyways, uh, on a Elixir code base, the most important part of your code is going to be under the lib folder. And on the lib folder, you can see that there is uh, the name of your project, a folder with that name, and then another folder with the name of your project underscore web. So the name of my project is tech school. I have a folder called tech school and another tech school underscore uh, web. And as you can imagine, uh, the backend logic, the business logic, is inside the tech school folder. And then the UI slash web logic is on the tech school underscore web uh, folder. I'm going to give just a quick overview of the tech school folder, but I'm going to spend the majority of this video showing the web folder, which is the one that I'm going to talk about React, for example. So. On the tech school folder, let me give you an example. I am calling the GitHub API to show the contributors of the project on the homepage. So interacting with the GitHub API is business logic. It's not UI logic. I'm going to display that on the front end later. So you can go here inside tech school. I have a file dot, uh, called github.ex, which stands for Elixir. Okay, now I need to go back to my place. Hopefully here is fine. Okay, so I basically created a module under the tech school uh, parent module. So it's dev module tech school dot github. I have a constant here, which is named base URL. And I'm going to call that URL uh, throughout the code. And then I have a bunch of functions here. I have one called get contributors and then another two functions with a def p keyword. As you can imagine, uh, def uh, is the definition of a function and then def p is the definition of a private function. So if I try to access the GitHub module outside of uh, this module, I can only access the get contributors. So the get contributors, what it does is, and this code doesn't look really beautiful. If you know how to refactor it, if you have more experience on Elixir, please let me know, open a PR. Basically, I am checking if I'm running the tests. If I'm running the tests, I don't wanna, I don't care about the GitHub API. I'm gonna return a uh, empty array. And here you have implicit return. You don't need to type return. You can just type uh, an empty array, for example. And if I'm not running tests, I am first of all trying to get the cache for GitHub contributors. And cache, cachex is a library that works on top of a native Elixir caching mechanism that uses the memory. So there's no Redis or anything on this code base at all. It's just using uh, in memory cache. And the cachex library works on top of the Erlang memory cache. Anyways, there's no, I just wanted to say that there's no Redis. Then I check if there is a cache. If there is a cache miss, then I'm going to fetch the GitHub contributors calling the API and then populate the cache. And if there is a cache hit, I'm just going to return the contributors, all right? This is an example of business logic that you can find on Elixir. Now let me show you where I'm using this. If we go back to the tech school 
underscore web folder. Uh, as I said before, I'm using Live View for the front end. So the home page is a Live View, which is under the Live folder. You click on Live. I have Page Live. I used this name for like uh, static pages, like the home page. So you open up that folder. I'm a front end developer, so I need to break everything into smaller components. That's why I have a components folder. So here we have two files. This is interesting. We have home.ex, and this is where your logic for the home page lives. And I could render the entire home page inside this file, but I like separating UI from custom logic. So if you name, uh, if you use the same name for your page, but using the .html, .hex uh, syntax, this is basically the render function that you could be using inside the home file, but you're using it separately. So yeah, uh, Elixir do some magic behind the scenes to sync these two files. So if you open if you open the code to the home page, you need to scroll down a lot. Here, let me see. Okay. Uh, the code doesn't look really good here, but it's because I'm doing an async assign to the GitHub contributors because like maybe the GitHub API is slow to respond and I am using caching to mitigate that. But I don't know if for some reason I it takes a long time to get the GitHub contributors uh, I don't want that possibility to happen on my website. So I am doing a first render of the page and then assigning later the GitHub contributors through an async assign. If you worked with Remix, for example, that would be the equivalent of me uh, returning the defer function where you await for every single other promise, but you don't await for the GitHub API so you defer that promise to the front end. This is basically what I'm doing here. And if you go back to the home uh, file, you can see that, uh, yeah, during the mount of the home page, I am doing an async assign to the GitHub contributors. And here I am calling the GitHub context. So you can see that I, I just typed github.getContributors and then I'm using an alias on top to avoid having to write textcode.github. Here I just write github.getContributors. I'm doing an async assign, which is the equivalent of the defer on Remix, for example. And then once uh, the GitHub contributors variable is okay, and there are results, then I display the content. That's pretty much what, I, what I'm doing. And then after that, I'm assigning the GitHub contributors to this variable and then looping over the GitHub contributors dot result on the homepage. That's pretty much it. But now we're going to take a look at another folder where I'm rendering the courses page. And this one is interesting because if you go over to tech school and my memory is not so good right now. I'm going to clean the SSD later. If you go to the courses page, here is a more interesting page. You have a bunch of filters. You have a search uh, input. So I can type for Elixir here. And there you go. I find a website and a bunch of courses. This is a more interesting page and I'm using Live View. So this is where I want to show you how similar this looks to React, for example. If you go to the course live folder, you go here, you have the same uh, logic of having the name of your file dot ex for the logic, and then the name of the file dot html dot hex for your UI. So the UI for the courses page is here and then sort of the JavaScript functions of your page are on the index.ex. So 
yeah, let me zoom out a little bit further. This is something else that I wanted to show. Here you can see a bunch of ATTR, ATTR everywhere. Do you know what that is? I am defining three components for this page. If you open the components folder, I have three components. One called course card, another platform card, and another for search. I can define the props for those uh, components here. And I can define the prop type for each uh, for each prop of the component. So here, for example, I have a course card. I'm expecting a course and it is required. So if I go to the front end, uh, let me find a course card. Here it is. This is the syntax of uh, using a custom component. On React, you would call the component name with uh, an uppercase on the first letter. On Elixir, you call the name of your component with a dot in the beginning. So I'm um, doing a loop here over the courses. And as I said, the course prop is mandatory. If I remove here course, I should get an error. There you go. I mean, not an error, I get an, a warning. If you hover over the mouse here, you can see missing required attribute course, which is pretty neat. I am a front end developer. This is very important to me. Okay, same for any other component. So I have a search and I, I have a bunch of uh, props here. For example, language names is a list and it is required. If I go back to my search component, which is this one on top, if I remove uh, language names, for example, oops, let me remove that. Uh, I should be getting a warning. There you go, language names. But if I have the prop here, but it's the incorrect uh, type, so I just say language names equals uh, false, I should get another warning. And there you go. If I hover over here, uh, the language names should be a list and I got false. So, I mean, this is pretty much TypeScript for me. This is heaven. I freaking love this. This was one of the reasons why I picked uh, Elixir uh, for my side projects uh, programming language because it's freaking amazing and the front end is awesome. So I can define the props. Uh, I can define the prop types. I can define if it's required or not. It's pretty, pretty neat. So how do I do the search here? I have a mount function that runs once to mount the page, which is very similar how React works. This would be the equivalent of a use effect with an empty dependency array. So it's a use effect that only runs once. And then I have another one called handle params, which is triggered whenever I might be wrong here. Let me just read the docs. Uh, invoke after mount and whenever there is a live patch event. So this also runs once, at least once, once uh, like after the page is mounted. But then whenever there is a patch event of some sorts, uh, this handle params function is triggered again. So if you go back to the UI, take a look here. I'm gonna open up the search component. On the search component, I have a form, right? And then on the form, I have a phx-submit event. I also have a phx.change event. What this does is basically, whenever there's a submit on this form or a change, I am gonna trigger the search. Okay, and there's a bunch of other primitives here. I also have a PHX debounce of blur to like only trigger the change whenever there's a blur effect, like whenever I click inside the search or outside the search, you have a lot of control here. But once I trigger the search event, what is going to happen? If you go back to my index.ex file, there is another function called, uh, oh yeah, I have two events. One to load more courses, which is uh, this button here. 
let me clear the filters I'm gonna clear this up if I scroll down there's the load more button whenever I click on it I trigger the load more event um, so I have two handle event functions which are live view specific one to handle the load more event and the other one to handle the search event so if you take a look at the search event this one is uh, easier to understand in my opinion I'm doing a push to the to the same live view saying that I changed the URL parameters and I have another custom function here called build URL where I build the URL depending of which input got selected what you typed uh, on the search bar so if you go back to the website uh, if I search for new I don't know uh, new no let me search for Enix okay you can see that the URL changed now I have a parameter called search and the value is Phoenix this is what I'm doing with the push patch uh, I'm doing a push patch to a new page I mean the same page but with URL parameters on this case I can have a search parameter I can have a framework parameter language tool, fundamentals and then once I add those parameters to the page this second function called handle params is triggered and this is where I handle my uh, this is where I interact with the business logic this is where I go here and I'm like okay I need to search again for the courses search again for the platforms I have a couple of extra variables here to see if there are courses available if there aren't uh, then I'm gonna do something else on the front end it's pretty neat so this is pretty much it like the small overview of how uh, elixir and phoenix they work together how you can work with the front end I know I haven't covered anything about functional programming how you need to like uh, do use this bunch of weird pipes uh, and then return the same socket at the end of the all the operations on the live view but I just wanted to give you a quick taste of what elixir looks like in my opinion this is the language and this is the front-end framework that is most similar to react I tried writing a bunch of other frameworks I tried writing uh, stimulus JS hotwire uh, I forgot the name of the other one Alpine JS but they don't look like react in my opinion and then when I see this code I cannot explain why but it's similar like my react brain can sort of understand what's going on here on react code base for example we would have a function called on load more on search and then we would call the backend or interact with the database this is pretty much what I'm doing the only difference is a little bit of the syntax because JavaScript is object oriented and elixir is functional programming so you need to do the weird pipes and then return uh, the socket on every operation but these are the small details if you enjoyed what you are seeing here and you're like wow this is this looks promising I, I like the front end I like the back end code it looks beautiful if you were interested then make sure you visit techschool.dev this resource is 100% free there is not a single thing here that is paid the only thing you can do if you want is sponsor me if you don't want to sponsor me no problem just keep using the website everything is free feel free to visit the bootcamps tab click on full stack elixir and frame uh, and phoenix if you already know html CSS, uh, css javascript you can go you can scroll down and click on elixir i have a bunch of cool recommendations for elixir courses and phoenix courses so there you go I hope you enjoyed this video and there's a bunch of extra elixir content incoming that's it thank you so much see you next time